Welcome to Dark Knight Films Reviews. I'm your host, Matt Spies, and today we are looking at Cult of the Cobra, released in 1955. Cult of the Cobra stars Faith Damarju, Richard Long, Marshall Thompson, William Reynolds, Kathleen Hughes, Jack Kelly, Myrna Hansen, David Jansen, Leonard Strong, James Dobson, and Edward Platt. Cult of the Cobra is directed by Francis D. Lyon. Now, I was aware of this film way back, but I looked at the plot synopsis and I decided not to watch it. Um, I am an enthusiast in the India mythology about the Ikandari Nags, which are shape-shifting cobra creature that the Indian culture believe in as some say they're evil, some say they're not um, in their mythology, depending on their mindset toward the creatures. And I've always been fascinated with that, and uh, I figured that when I saw the title of this movie that this was going to be a U.S. movie that took advantage of those um, mythologies from India. Um, but as I read about it, I was, I was less interested in watching it right now. Um, I chose to go ahead and watch several of the um, India-based movies and TV shows based on the actual mythologies. Um, one of them was a series that aired in between 98 and 99 called Nogin. And there was a more recent one in the, in the 2000s that's still running today, I believe, um, also called Nogin, but it's spelled with two A's instead of one. But I was fascinated with the 98, um, 99 um, TV series. Now, it is soap opera-ish, and it, it has, you know, it's issues where certain episodes just are boring because it's like a soap opera, and certain um, episodes don't even have the snake creatures in them. So um, most of the other characters were boring to me. But yeah, that uh, 2000s uh, series is just—it's just not as good um, to me. It doesn't—it's uh, not a very good adaptation of that mythology. And uh, the 98, 99 series—it inspired me to write and direct my 2020 film, Queen Cobra. I basically did a lot of um, elements and sequences that I really thought were effective in that original series' episodes and just picked certain ones that were the best story beats and integrated them into what I considered a more improved um, version of that because like I said I just love this um, mythology I think um, more American filmmakers should do these but now that um, that movie is done I've, I've finished that movie I know that's a shameless plug talking about my own movie on this review but since that movie is done and I am doing these universal reviews, I figured, hey, well, it's not going to hurt to go ahead and check out 
uh, Cult of the Cobra, no. Um, I've already finished my film, so if I watch this, it's not going to affect my inspirations as far as that goes. <laughs> so, um, so, I checked it out, um, and uh, it, it does not owe a lot to the Ikandari Nog um, mythologies at all. It, it owes more to the 1942 film, The Cat People. I think that's a shame. I mean, they had a good idea that they could have translated over to the U.S. audiences, do their own little rip-off version of a successful film with... Uh, Cat people. The only thing they really changed was, you know, they made the instead of the cat creature, it's a, it's a cobra creature. You know, so yeah, it's it's just. But the film itself, some of the imagery in here could have been interesting, but the opening sequence in which you see the female partially between the states of. Cobra and human. It's not very effective. It is a woman in a bodysuit with a bodysuit mask completely over her head. And uh, and I don't even think it's the, the real actress that's playing Lisa Faith Demerju. Um, but uh, it... It's it, it's it's a not a very good scene. Um, I like the lead uh, male character in this. He's played by Richard Long, who I've always loved since Big Valley. Um, he's playing a character named Paul Abel, and him and his military group that he's stationed with overseas, while they're in Asia, decide. You know, I don't know why they decided on Asia as far as a place to make this uh, cobra cult be located at, but they did it. It's apparent that they didn't research the India um, mythologies or any of that for this film. Um, but they're over in Asia, and, the, and they come across a man from that country called Daru, who, played by Leonard Strong, who offers to enlighten them in a cult that worships these cobra creatures. And Richard Long and his friends, Marshall Thompson's, Tom Merkel, uh, William Reynolds, Pete Norton, Jack Kelly's, Carl Turner, and ironically, uh, David Jansen's, uh, Rico Nardi, yes, um, David Jansen, the actor who went on to play in the uh, TV series The Fugitive, which the Harrison Ford Tommy Lee Jones movie is based on. This was the original Fugitive, and he's in this movie. Um, and then there was uh, James Dobson as uh, Nick, the final member of their team. Um, and they all go into this cult ritual thing, and uh, James Dobson's character of Nick is stupid enough to pull out a camera, even though they t said not to bring a camera, and he takes a picture of the snake creature, uh, and uh, they attack him and try and, you know, stop him. He tries to steal the... Cobra Queen in, while, while she's in her basket. And meanwhile, you have Edward Platt playing the snake cult leader. And uh, us older people like myself uh, will recognize uh, Edward Platt as uh, the boss of uh, Maxwell Smart in uh, Get Smart. So it's, it's funny seeing him play this you know, evil snake cult leader, but 
nice bit of trivia there. But um, they narrowly escape. They have to fight their way out of the place and everything. They're soldiers, so it's pretty easy for them. Um, they all get to the car, except for uh, James Dobson's Nick, who took the basket with him and was trying to steal the basket. And uh, they come along and find him laid out and he's been bit, and there is a female escaping, running away from where he was laying. Um, Marshall Thompson's Tom Merkel ends up saving him, basically, um, by noticing the bite mark on him, and, and uh, gets a knife and cuts it, cuts, cuts it open and sucks out the venom that he can, spits it out, and uh, they end up getting him in their in their jeep, and they take him to a hospital. Um, and this all sets up where Edward Platt's character, the snake cult leader, tells them that they will be cursed and they will all die. So that's the gist of this story. Um, after that, uh, Faith. DeMarju's character of Lisa Moya turns up and begins to systematically uh, kill off all the members of these friends, this military group friends. And, uh, I mean, it's got good performances, but some of the effects are really, really bad. Um... You can tell they never had a real snake in this film. And the effects weren't good enough to actually, you know, have an animatronic snake that looks real. So they just got this rubbery, fake-looking snake when the snake is on screen. And half the time, you're not even seeing that. You are only seeing a shadow showing up in front of the person. And then they they are in terror re reacting to it. And you're seeing it through the snake's point of view. And, uh, and then they have the one moment where she's supposed to transform into the snake. And it's a really cheap effect. It just pans away from her to the wall. You see the shadow of her. And all of a sudden, there's just a fade from her to a uh, shadow of the fake snake. And, and it just... Universal did better effects back in the 40s. Now, come on, I know you can do better than this. And, and you know, 55, you know, the year before this, you had the creature from the Black Lagoon. You can't come up with a better snake creature than this? Come on, people. So, yeah, I mean, the actors give pretty good performances, um, but the story is just completely uninspired. It just feels like a ripoff of cat people. So, um, like I said, the performances are really good in it, but it's, if you want to check it out, check it out. If you liked, if you liked cat people, you'll probably enjoy this movie immensely. But if you're going in there like I was and really are into these snake creature mythologies, the way that I have researched this stuff, um, you're going to be sadly disappointed with this film. So I will give uh, Cult of the Cobra from 1955, I will give this film a 7.0 out of 10. I mean, it's it's not too bad of a movie, um, but they could have done a lot better with this. Um, considering the effects work that they had with the costume for the for the creature and the creature from the Black Lagoon and everything, they could have done that snake creature when it came out of the um, basket. They could have done that a lot cooler, and the whole transformation sequences. I mean, they did better with the Invisible Man scenes, with him turning invisible and him, you know, not having a body. Um, 
the, the Wolfman movies, whether it's Werewolf of London or whether it's The Wolfman, they had better effects. The, like I said, the 30s and 40s had better effects than this 1955 movie. And uh, that's sad to note. This could have been so cool if they would have used some of those techniques that they have had at their disposal all of this time. But they didn't do it. So it's just a lackluster um, film to me. But what did you think of Cult of the Cobra? Have you seen this movie? Do you agree with my review? Let me know in the comments down below. And as usual, if you like this review, do not forget to like, share, and subscribe. Because it really does help this channel out a lot. Anyway, this is still not the end of my Universal Monsters reviews. They will go on. A few more. So... <laughs> Those of you who have wanted to see this, rejoice. I'm going to do some more. So, hope you'll stick around for those. And I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching.